Let's talk about immutable update patterns. We'll discuss click events, color representations, math.random, template literals for strings in JavaScript, generating random colors, spread syntax, object.assign, object mutation, and immutable update patterns. When you are using unidirectional data flow and you have pieces of state that need to change independently, this is when you need to start using immutable update patterns. To recap, our mouse follower example from last time sets the state to be the new x and y position of the mouse from the interaction event every time the mouse moves. But let's say we want to make this circle change color when you click on it. How do we do that? I'm going to fork this example and call it mouse follower that changes color. I'd like to make it so that when you click it changes color. This code here listens for when the mouse moves. I'm going to copy paste that whole chunk and change the event name from mouse move to click. And then just to make sure that works I'm going to delete that logic and then say console.log clicked and we can ignore the event for now. Now when I click it says clicked. Alright. Now when it comes to color we can use the fill attribute like this. On our circle we can add another attribute called fill and we can set it to let's say red and then the circle turns red or green or blue there are a number of named colors that CSS supports. This is the CSS color standard here. But the most common representation of color is like this. It's called hex color codes. All Fs is white and all zeros is black. The first two here control red. The second two control green. And the last two control blue. There's also a more human readable form of this that looks like RGB and it almost looks like a function call but it's not. It's a domain specific language for colors. These values go from 0 to 255 which is the same range that's expressible with those hex codes from 00, 0 to FF. So what I really want to do here is have it so that when you click it changes to a random color. How do we come up with a random color? Well, let's try it. Let's just put random numbers in here between 0 and 255. Let's say 100, 50, and 232. Okay, so I think if we just take this string and put it in our code, this will set us up for programmatically generating random colors. We can use a built-in utility called math.random. Math.random will give us a random number between 0 and 1. We can multiply that by 255 to get a random number between 0 and 255. For the colors though, this really should be integers. For that we can use the built-in math.floor and then we get a random integer between 0 and 255. So what I want to do now is take this and then substitute that in for red, green, and blue. Let's make variables r, g, and b. Now this string is just going to say r, g, and b, but we need to substitute those for these variables here. We can do that with the backtick, a string template literal, and then with this syntax here, dollar sign, and curly braces. Now we are console.logging a random color when we click. Alright, now comes the little tricky part, which is how do we get this color into our state in such a way that it doesn't interfere with the XY position and then render our circle to be the color that is stored in the state. Let's review real quick how we're setting the state on a mouse move. We are invoking the setState function and passing in 
a function. What that function does is mint a brand new object that gets implicitly returned. And that new object has properties x and y. So we want to do something kind of similar to this for color. I'm going to paste that bit of code down here. And ideally, we could say color is this value here. I'll just paste it in there. All right, what's going to happen now? If I click, the circle goes back to 0, 0. Because when we set the state to be just the color, x and y get uh, clobbered. This new object does not have the x and y from the old state. But anyway, let's first render out this color in the circles so we can see that it's at least getting stored. When we are unpacking the state using destructuring, we can grab x, y, and also color. And in addition to setting cx and cy, we can set the fill to be color. Now, if I click, it actually changed color. OK, we've reached the crux of the problem. What we need to do is make sure that the object that we generate when we call set state, this one here, has x and y defined. And that x and y should come from the previous version of the state. Let's review quickly how set state is implemented. OK, here's index.js, which defines set state. It's a function that takes as input a function called next. That function is invoked passing in the current value of the state. And then the value returned from next is set to be the new value of the state. And then we call render. So we need to take advantage of the fact that the previous version of the state is going to be passed into our function. In our click listener, when we set the state, this function here actually accepts an argument, which is state, the previous version of the state. In addition to just containing color, the new state also needs to contain x and y. We can get both of those from the previous state. x is state.x and y is state.y. Now, when we click, it changes color and stays in the same spot. But when we move the mouse around, it loses the color that it had. To make sure it keeps the color on the mouse move handler, we can utilize the previous state to set the color on the new state based on the color from the old state. Now, when we click and then move, it stays the same color. All right. OK, we have solved the core problem. Now I'm just going to clean up the implementation a little bit and give a little more background knowledge on this concept of immutable update patterns, which is what this is. Right now, we only have x, y, and color on our state. But imagine as a program grows, you're going to want to add more and more pieces of state. And all the code snippets that update the state should not need to be aware of all the other properties that are on the state. And one way to make it so that the code will scale and you won't have to go back and update each and every thing when you add a new piece of state is this. We can say dot, dot, dot state. You may be seeing the syntax for the first time. This is called spread syntax which is documented nicely in MDM. It works with objects and arrays. As a quick demo of this, let's say we have this object with x, y, and color. If we just make a new object and put dot, dot, dot state in there, it will create a new object and then assign all of those properties over. Note that this is not mutating the original state. 
That's why it's called immutable update. To prove this, I can assign this new thing to a variable called state2. Now we've got state and state2. And check this out. If I go in and mutate the original state object by saying state.x equals, let's say, 400, if we look at state, it has changed. But if we look at state2, it has not changed. This is because when we created state2, a brand new object was minted, and all of the properties were sort of assigned over to the new object. Before spread syntax, uh, the old school way to do this is with object.assign, which you may find in code examples out there. That spread syntax is equivalent to saying object.assign, a brand new object as the first argument, and then state as the second argument. And with object.assign, we can add as many of these additional objects as we want. For example, another one that sets color to be green. Notice what this did. It minted a new object. It copied all the fields from state into that object. And then it copied all the fields from this new object into that object as well. So it's kind of like merged everything together into the new state, which has the previous x and y, and the new color. This is equivalent to the following syntax, dot, 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 state, and then color is green. It's doing the exact same thing. It will mint a new object, copy over all the properties of the original state object without mutating it, and then copy over the properties on this object. So that's what spread syntax is all about. In this case, we use it to copy over the color property of the state and whatever other properties may be introduced in the future. Now, when we click, we can do the same to copy over x and y. So instead of explicitly copying over state.x and state.y, we can just say dot, 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 state like this. And I think the order might matter. Yeah, see, what, ha what happens here is that I'm moving the mouse, but it's not following. This is because the dot, dot, dot state comes after x and y. So what that does is it takes actually the old version of x and y and overwrites the new x and y. So what we need to do is put the dot, dot, dot state first, like this. Now, we move the mouse, we click it to change color, and everything works properly. All right, sweet. All right, that's how we can use immutable update patterns to have position and color be changed independently. There is this amazing article from Redux about immutable update patterns. This is a handy reference that I find myself coming back to again and again and again. What we've done here is the simplest version of this, but it does scale to having nested state and also arrays. This document covers inserting and removing items from arrays and various other ways to handle immutable update patterns.